All right, we're now recording. Dude, the Fed just announced 0.50 instead of 0.25, and the market dumped. Look at this. Bro, this is spy in the last 30 minutes if you weren't paying attention to it. Uh, we all knew it was coming, guys. <laughs> I think this is the recession beginning. Yeah. You guys, everything needs to put a stop, guys. You know, I mean, whatever your time horizon is, unless you're willing to hold through five to eight years, potentially, who knows, right? Yep. This is just a warning for everybody right now because the market's been straight up for 12 years, guys. Everything has to go back. Look at market cycles. Usually it's around four or five years, but we had historic 12 to 13 to 14 year bull runs. How many years has this been? Since Dude, hold on, Bell. Let me go to a 15 year chart, bro. I don't even, oh, shoot. I don't have a 15. I have a five year. It's, but, it's like 12 to 14 years. Bro, it's, it's so long. Like you have to think that this has to like come back a big, like at least a big correction at some point. So this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. So the guys are the whole, I mean, a lot of you kids, including you, Tosh, have not even been alive since the recession. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you might have been just fucking, <laughs> you know, barely out of fucking high school. Bro, probably like on LimeWire, for God's sakes. So, I mean, we yeah, still have a Hotmail account, you know? We still do, but <laughs> but uh, AOL account. But, um, but guys, so this is the – so before we start this, I want to show this tweet. I'm not trying to make fun of my girlfriend or anything, but she's. <laughs> but we totally are. Let's what you got, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we say we're not, we actually are. Because this is a good point with the markets pulling back. Hold on, let me let me go back to my my tweet yesterday. <laughs> that's like that's like the saying. No offense, but yeah, like a little bit of offense. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, here. Bill Bird talks a lot about that in stand up. All right, here. Come on, put it all here. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> oh, this is going to be funny. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> My girlfriend really doesn't understand what I do. She asked me if I, if I knew who Kathy Wood is. I laughed. She told me she follows her pics and showed me the very first time her portfolio and all the stocks are down to 80%. Only thing up is Tesla. Rest are garbage like PLTR. And I'll pull this up, guys. Seriously, it's a fucking shit show. Down huge. Use my girlfriend. Oh, no, I'll go to the daily. You, oh shit. Use my girlfriend as an example of what not to do. She has no plan, no stop, just because she followed someone else she read a blog about online. One thing she did well is she never added to a loser, just held it all the way down 60 to 80% because she ran out of funds because she bought all in a one-stop shop. My 10-year-old son, for the first time this past week, he bought two shares of Tesla. Let me go to Tesla now so you guys can see. Bought two shares of Tesla at 600. He doubled his money. He's doing better than 99% of all the traders out there. LOL. She owns Alibaba. Oh, no. She owns Baba at 268 average or so. She's getting smoked. Bro, 268. It's at what? 70. Right. Oh, my God, bro. How do you, how do you, how are you down 200 points, right? No, I, I, dude, I was with her on that, bro. I literally owned Alibaba. I think during this dip, I was buying. And I sold it because I was like, dude, I don't trust these China companies right now. We're like, there's just too much politically going on with all this shit. And I got, thank God I got out, man. Yeah. So it just shows you guys. I mean, the thing is, so this is the, wait, let me, let me get my diet coat. Let me come back in like 30 seconds. <laughs> right. it, boy. And the thing is, guys, remember what Bao just said. If you're an eight to 10, like long-term outlook, you can pretty much buy anywhere in the spy and be okay in a decade. But guys, if you're not trading like that and you're day trading this shit you cannot just be a bag holder so that's that's the difference so this is so <laughs> whenever i meet someone oh let me take it to that. this is a good one yeah that is the best line of the day bro i i'm i mean she showed me just two days ago i logged in i'm like what the fuck i've never seen portfolio it was all down every single one down 68 percent bro Bro, it's and then, unbelievable. And then the, that's the thing. That just shows you guys that, you know what, man? So my advice, whenever I meet someone, they um they find out what I do, and they, they automatically ask me for a stock tip. And like that's not what I do, right? I teach you what to trade. And so this is the one thing that I always tell them. Like, if I had to teach them something about trading in pretty much like 30 seconds to a minute, I tell them this. No one knows what the hell the stock is going to do 100%. 
The only thing you could do is my advice to you is anything you buy is okay as long as you pre-plan. And the plan includes we're going to enter, we're going to exit, we're both a winner and a loser. And that's it. If you do those things, guys, you are better off than 99% of the people out there. You pre-plan your trade before you get in because that's when you are most not biased, right? Not meant emotionally biased. But Definitely. the key is always this, guys. Key is the risk management. You need to place a stop. A stop. You, a stop is basically an exit. Either you exit for a winner or a loser. Most people don't have a fucking exit plan, either for a winner or a loser. Because if it goes up, they don't know when to sell. Well, could you imagine? Not about- Bell, Bell, could you imagine like learning how to drive your car and not wearing a seatbelt? Like, are you out of your mind? Like, what? The, that's like going to war without a gun. Like, dude. Guys, if you go to a trading day, you have to have a plan. We talked about this earlier in the beginning of this webinar. That's what separates real traders from non-traders or people who wing it. And people who say, yeah, day trade. Dude, oh, I'll give you an example. I went to Miami this past weekend. Bro, I met a couple guys at the dinner table, multi-millionaires, but within different fields of trading. They're like, yeah, man, I used to trade. I'd make 200 grand in a day and then lose 300. I said, yeah, man, you had no fucking plan, bro. I said, you want to come back and learn? That's the point, guys, is like everyone was once a trader. Don't be, hey, I was once a trader. Be, hey, I'm a trader now because of every day I X, Y, and Z. I have my risk management. I have my plan. I execute properly, right? Otherwise, you're just a gambler. Oh, I was a trader. No, dude, you were a gambler. You were not a trader. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, Rob asked, I had a plumber over and he saw my screens and asked me if I had a stock tip. And I told him the best tip is not to believe anybody's stock tip. Yeah, you should, you should have just told him to buy the, buy the fucking dip on Alibaba. <laughs> no, but that's the thing, guys. The thing is, you guys, whatever you guys do, you need to have an exit plan. An exit plan, once again, includes where you're going to sell because not knowing where to sell is just as bad as just not fucking eating the loss, right? So place it in. Whatever you do, you place it in because that's the most uh, time you're most clear. So, and that leads to, to this risk management. I want to give a heads up to, uh, I mean, here we go. Hold on. I want to give a shout out to K, KP. Doesn't KP. Mr. KP. Here, Let's I'm gonna post go. Um, now, do you, you want to read this out or? Yeah, you read it. I'll go for it. Um, okay. So uh, KP said, FYI, these risk settings for max loss, et cetera, are available in DOS, at least for success trader clients. You may have to ask them to enable it. You can set them yourself by going to trade slash accounts, right? Uh, then right click your account and select edit risk control. I have no, I, I have no idea this was possible. Instructions right here. And then guys, this is what it looks like. This is sick. You can put in a uh... So you, you can email them. They're not auto enabled. You email them and then you put in. But in my opinion, guys, you look at this, you email them to set it so that you cannot reset it back. That's and, so sick. Because what happens is, man, you degenerates, you degenerate gamblers. You will fucking trigger that max loss and then go back and treat this fucking thing to let you trade again. <laughs> Oh, I know some of you motherfuckers in here. We've had some phone calls. I know you still do that. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't enable it because I don't want that option, bro. Because you know what, man? You blow up the fucking, you know, you reach your max loss. And then what, I guarantee you're going to go to the screen and edit it back. Yep, exactly. Because, because it's convenient, right, Bell? It's so convenient to do so, so people do it. Because, because you can't help yourself, man. When you, when you hit a certain maximum loss, you just go red. Like, I mean, it's just like revenge trading and you just can't help it, man. It's, I do it all the time. I'm so fucking pissed. I'm like, fuck. I, I, every time you stop out, it's always at the, the top or the bottom, guys. Yep. If you're short, you stop out the top. If you're long, you stop out the bottom. And it bounces, man. If you're selling that shit for a fucking major loss, it will go go bounce. It will bounce back on you. And you're like, shit, I just exited at the bottom of the top. So. And then when you lose, you lose always more than you want. And when you win, it's never enough. <laughs> Welcome to oh, the no. trader. So I don't, don't, don't just, just use the screen to see what you can do, the type of things. The way I do it is this, guys. Um, I set it at a max loss per ticker. We talked about this last week. Set it per ticker. Uh, do a small amount because what happens is once, once you lose a certain amount of that ticker, you're, you're, you're just blocked from that ticker. You can't go back to that ticker. Start trading something else. It's fine. But don't mess with that ticker. If you don't even trust yourself, just block yourself an entire account. Because if you if if you lose your if you max out on a on a particular ticker, you may have revenge trading ideas in your head on another ticker, right? So you only you only you yourself know how bad of a degenerate you are. 
1000%. You got it, guys, guys, the thing that's so fun about trading is you're going to find your identity in here. You're going to find your comfort levels where you're not good, what you need to get better at. You're going to really learn yourself in price action, but people lose themselves when they don't protect themselves. And then, then they never figure out who they are. That's the whole point. Like, this is so much fun, but you got to take it seriously. And the people that treat this like a hobby, for lack of a better understanding, get hobby results. But if you treat it like a career, guys, you show up, you're your own CEO. You write yourself memos. You have deadlines. You you freaking go to work on time. You set the risk parameter. Like, like the point is, yes, you're your own boss, but dude, you need to take it seriously. This is a business, man. It's not a hobby. It's a hobby for people who want hobby results. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Um, Hoffer, this is super helpful because I can see the down count is a setting. I'm such a degenerate sometimes. I override the five second countdown to stop me out from a max loss. Dude. Do I even know there was a heartbeat like that? That's fucking, G that's good, man. So knowing the risk parameters here, you can set it, it's fucking great. Because man, a lot of times you're like, you know, just pressing buttons like an idiot. Yep. Sometimes you need a fucking timeout, right? And that's your timeout. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's hard to give yourself that timeout, right? So you need things like this. It's called systems, guys. It's called systems. In any industry, businesses have systems that help them eliminate the emotion. That's the point. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Anybody on YouTube, post your questions, guys. Anybody that's a member, please post in the webinars channel that's listening in. Please post your questions. <laughs> well, yeah, Hoffer, this is why everybody gets into trouble. <laughs> How do you decide and determine what type of trader you are, i.e. short or long trader, small or large cap? Val, you want to tackle that first? Uh, my advice is, okay, if, you brand, if you're that new and to trading, observe. The first step to do is watch the videos. Watch uh, Joe Kelly's Trading Basics and especially the, the Accelerator, guys. Everybody should be watching. The, we, did, we don't talk about that enough lately. You got to start with the Accelerator. And then the next step is to watch. It's like anything. It's like becoming a doctor, guys. You don't know if you want to be a fucking, a fucking heart doctor, you know, or whatever you want to become a doctor, a foot doctor, an ass doctor. <laughs> <laughs> or like, yeah, or a dentist, like of some sort. Like you want the medical field of some sort, but it's very vast, right? That's, that's so, trading as well. So you have to observe and see which one fits you and then start paper trading. Start paper trading to see which one you're better at. Hell yeah. You have to just yeah. try, guys. And then you don't have to try with real money. Uh, one good thing about one good thing though about success trader is the fact that there's no minimums. And using the MIC route, guys, you get a, a rebate back that's bigger than your commission. So basically, it acts as a demo account. You can put in one share and start trading one share, guys. One share, two shares, ten shares, hundred shares, whatever you want. But you're going to feel it because you actually have some skin in the game. So yeah. not having those minimums is like the biggest game changer for retail traders that's ever been done on a DMA broker. Yeah, guys. Don't, yeah. Like, you guys don't understand, man, how big this is. Like you have to get yeah. success. Uh, there's, uh, my advice to all you demo traders, don't use it more than a month. Because what happens once you use it more than a month because of bad habit, the fills are very different on a demo account. The feeling is very different because there's no skin in the game. So using just 10 shares, you know, 10 shares, how much are you going to lose? A few bucks, right? You, a stock, a small cap goes up a dollar, you lost $10. You know, if you can't lose $10, then you got some problems, but then go back to one share, right? Exactly. <laughs> so whatever it is, guys, use it. Instead of using a demo account too long, you know, use a live account with one share, two shares, 10 shares, whatever you want to use. Dude, look at look you, Bow's ten year old son Vegas is kicking all your guys' ass, man. He's doing two shares of Tesla, doubling his money. I love it, man. I'm like, how would you get that money from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, business, I'm, business I'm, is I'm, good. I, I, I'm missing a lot of money from my fucking pockets. <laughs> I know where he's going. No. Vegas is the real CEO of MIC. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Wow, look at that spy bounce, jeez. Uh, Kroll P.S. Kelwincy on YouTube. Uh, do you guys short? We do short, buddy. Yes, we are a community that does small caps, long and short, big caps, long and short, swing trading and options, calls and puts. So we actually tackle everything for our members. Yes. In fact, as you can see, like if we just go to the watch list channel right here, th these are the shorts that we are paying attention to in small caps today, as you can see. 
some didn't hit the lines, not every day they do, but we're, we're, we focus on shorts in the main trading room. And then large cap, there's a lot of longs. And then we have a swing room for swings. And then options, obviously, you know, are there too. So you, you have whatever you're looking for. That's the point. Um, Bruce Wayne, I straight up feel like a paper, like a, like a paper trader for too long still. Bruce, in, um, elaborate on that. Are you, you're saying you're paper trading for a while or talk to us, buddy. Let's, let's flush out the, the problem here. Yep. Post your questions. Don't be shy. Oh, before we get into it, Byron, you here, bro? <laughs> Don't forget, man. I for, I've been forgetting for a month. My bad, oh, no. My bad. <laughs> Byron, are you here? Byron, if you're here. Oh, nice. It looks like it. Yes. Yes. Byron, what's up, buddy? You, you, you want to add Byron on so you can speak to? 100%. Hey, so, so let's transition out. Let me, let me uh, introduce Byron, and then, then I'll just relax, man. Dude, 100%. Hold on one second, Byron. Let me, let me get you, buddy. <clears throat> Totally forgot. <laughs> Almost forgot again. My bad. My bad. Now a question on, or actually, let's see if Byron comes on real quick. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yo, what's up, buddy? Yeah. Hey, hey what's, what's up? Going what's going on? Thanks for the invite. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me. Uh, I want to choose Byron. Okay, uh, we dude, we've been watching him. He's been very helpful to the community, and his dude, his his training has just been going going really well and I, and we 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 asked him he wanted to be a junior mo junior moderator and he agreed so uh, i don't know what he's he doesn't know what he's getting himself into <laughs> but, but you know what i'm glad that he's around to help everybody so i'm gonna let him introduce himself congratulations buddy hey thank you thank you so much this is uh, i was shocked for the invite i appreciate it um but yeah so uh I live in north carolina um 35 married four kids so i'm like one of those that have gotten into trading a little bit late in the game i started trading uh probably end of 2018 um got introduced by tim sykes the whole thing just wanted to look for some additional income didn't turn out that way ended up blowing up an account even ended up taking out some credit card debt at the time uh and then blew up that account so i took a year off from trading just to study, to try to learn, um, then picked it back up in mid-2020, gained some consistency last year, found MIC last year. That also helped just learn a little bit more of my process and, and just really took off from there. Um, so definitely, uh, it's been a long journey, but here gaining some consistency and, and looking to eventually uh, walk away from my full-time software engineering job uh, that I'm doing from home. So yeah. hopefully trade and get there. Yeah, my, my advice is keep doing what you're doing, your day job, because that day job helps you to, to not be stressed. Oh yeah, for sure. For do sure. it and do it like me. We, we were just talking yesterday at Harry, do it like me. I was a software guy too. Do it until they fucking fire you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Basically get to the point where, because yeah, collect that paycheck. It's very hard to fire you. So you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean the bar the bar would be so high. Uh, my wife and I have set the bar so high for what what constitutes being able to actually walk away from a full time gig. So yeah, it's gonna be a long time until we get there. And that's good, man. So what I did was well, when I was your I was like actually your age, man. I was an old guy too. Really? So, yeah. Uh, when when I I walked away and um, I told myself two years at least two years of of what I would make as a uh, software guy saves up in cash. So that was the yeah. benchmark I put myself. Yeah. That way, like, hey, I can give it two years, um, 100% two years, and it doesn't work out. I can go back to my job. Definitely. But uh, yeah, guys, sure. all these aspiring traders, guys, it's very difficult when you don't have money to pay your bills to think that trading is the lottery, especially when you start out new. It takes, a, it takes time to learn, man. We are still learning every day. Not every day yeah. is going to be a winner, guys. And the, the, yeah, the more absolutely. stress you have from your normal life, the more chaos you have, the more chaotic your trade will be. Yep, exactly. 
Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. So some people are, are um oh, are so feeling Byron, how I feel like Byron. Yeah, this guy Aldi just said I feel like Byron to be able to walk away from a full time shift job. Congrats, Byron. Best of luck. Like it's a lot, right? It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a lot. I mean, the I know that the bar is set high, but at the same time, uh, I feel like I definitely gained the confidence through just knowing what those uh, weaknesses have been that have, you know, detracted from my account. Yeah. Just like not proper position sizing, not setting hard stops, like all the things that I've been learning here at MIC that have really helped me just gain that consistency that I know it's just there's a matter of sticking to that and not trying to hit home runs when they're not there. And yeah. Let yeah. The process for most, carry me for most, for most, for most people, supplemental income is, is, is great because being a full-time trader doesn't mean you trade all the time, guys. You know, right. if, if you have the ability to sit around all day, most of the time, most people don't have the discipline to not gamble. Right. Guys, I mean, I want to walk away, but I'm here helping you guys. Sometimes I just, I get so bored that I enter a trade and then I, end up losing a ton of money right and byron yeah, i mean let, yeah go ahead. let me ask you a question buddy now that you're like really really doing this don't you realize man that like all of the fluff on twitter is just other people and being stupid and then it's literally just you versus you man is that so cool man it, it really is and i've heard someone say before and it's really true that like one of the coolest things about trading is the self-discovery yeah, I mean, seriously. The my one of my biggest things has just been like impulse control. Like Val just mentioned, just jumping to a trade out of boredom when you know it's not an A plus setup, it's not really within your niche, and just being able to have the control to sit on the sides, uh, sidelines when you feel like all this money is just flowing out in front of you, but it's not wise to to try to chase it. Yeah, so man. And every like day you're just trying to get better at what you're either already good at or lacking so you can just fix right like it's just you versus you man every day like just yeah. get better at you know than you were the day before yeah hey you, yeah. Hey, you sure it's you versus you because uh all these guys losing and complaining is the market makers <laughs> yeah it's, it's putin it's putin <laughs> dude yeah, twitter just... there's a lot of excuses man <laughs> yeah no, i know no, it's definitely you. The, the biggest contributor is definitely you. Greed. It's definitely you, bro. Yeah, just greed and lack of lack of knowledge. Just not knowing sure? what a good process is. is uh, you sure it's not the lags on DOS? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I, I've lost a couple of trades that way, but that's definitely not been, that's been like maybe 1%. Yeah, exactly, bro. Uh, Byron, there, there's a couple questions targeted for Byron specifically. Are you small caps or large caps? And what does your process look like for you, bro? If you can go over it a little bit. Yeah, sure. So I'm definitely a majority small caps. Like I'm drawn to the short side. Um, I have, the, when I mess with large caps, it's really only when there's, pretty large moves um like a huge drop to the downside for instance like yesterday i'll probably classify vix the vxx as uh something that's typically more aligned with large caps but with that huge drop they had yesterday afternoon i just waited for a good bounce and that'll be the times when i i might jump into the short side there um, but primarily small caps and i would say that my process is you know since i have um I mentioned I've got four kids and I work from home. So my morning is typically, I wake up early around four or five in the morning to try to get some work done to allow myself to have some more trading time during the day. Wake up the kids around seven, uh, take them off to school and I'll be back in my chair at home around uh, 839. So that's These when- These are I'll, all market, uh, this is all market time. Yeah, Eastern time, that's right, that's right, market time. Um, so then that's when I'll sit down and, and check out the watch list, you know, check out Alex's watch list, check out Tom's watch list, um, look at scanners just to see myself if, if there's anything up or down that I might take interest in. And then really I just, uh, from that point, just wait for some of my patterns to pan out. I don't typically, I, I haven't, I haven't mastered low hanging fruit yet. So my entries are typically much later, maybe around, uh, 9 45 10 i might wait for an afternoon squeeze it tires out um to get short but uh but yeah that's what my morning typically looks like dude I, you got a lot on your plate bro i'm proud as hell of you damn yeah man it's it's crazy <laughs> holy it's crazy. shit dude 
So check this out, guys. Byron here has four kids, full-time job, wife. God damn. Uh, all this, and he manages to make it work, guys. So if you want something bad enough, and and notice Byron is not just sprinting, right? You are. Tell us how you got to where you are. You joined, and then you did, did you, I mean, you didn't just fucking one day wake up and and start pounding these charts like I see now. No, oh, absolutely not. I mean, I've people talk about like like log your ten thousand hours. I've I've seen by now thousands and thousands of charts. I've seen these patterns that repeat themselves so many times. It's been it's taken years. I mean, even dating back to when I said, like, I jumped back into trading, like, uh, 2020, since then, it's been, like, every day studying charts, studying other um, the professional traders, and then finally finding MIC, studying all the charts that are posted there, watching as many of the videos as I can that you all posted, and, uh, yeah, it's just been logging all that time to, to finally get some comfort in the market to where I feel like, okay, I, I've seen this so many times before. I know yeah. how to control myself. I know how to risk properly. I know what proper, proper, tar uh, proper targets are. I'm getting better at fantasy orders. That's been huge. I've learned from MIC um, to just remove some of the emotion out of it. And yeah, just taking it from there, man. I love that, man. I'm really, I'm really proud and happy for you, man. This is really cool. Like, dude, another success story with MIC is just, it lights us up, man. Seriously. I appreciate it. Shout out to uh, also uh, Stefan and Vic were kind enough to invite me into their tab group. So Hell yeah. I've got a tab community now and I'm learning a lot from those guys too. So Hell yeah. It's been great. Dude, this is awesome to hear you guys. Uh, anything else? So Byron now, um, well, um, good luck. <laughs> I guess you're going to get a little more DMs as, as uh, have a more, more DM now. <laughs> Welcome to the team. <laughs> One good thing, though, guys, what I like about teaching is the fact that teaching actually helps me to be able to understand my own process better. Because, you know, sometimes you think you know something until someone asks you a question. You're like, holy shit, I don't I don't really know. So, you know, that's the part of the education process. Not you not only educate others, but you help yourself learn it better because, you know, it takes a while to try to you know, understand your, your process completely to the point where you can simplify it enough to, to be able to explain it to your mother. Right. <laughs> What yeah. do you do? Definitely. Absolutely. Or your or your Absolutely. ten year old son who's trading better than you are. <laughs> hey man, if they can pick it up, if they can pick it up, and I can retire even earlier, it'd be great. <laughs> that's because that's because I'm his hard stop. He doesn't he doesn't need to fucking make money, right? So as a exactly. kid, yeah, he's making exactly. all the money because he doesn't care, right? <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. As long as thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, right, no, thanks, thanks for having me. Man. Thanks we, so we much. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it, guys. I love MIC. Love uh, growing in the community here, and just thanks for everything. See you, buddy. Thanks, man. See ya. Thanks, man. Guys, did we talk about priced in or what, man? You don't get bounces on this unless that shit's priced in. That's crazy. Wow. So, guys, uh, I think okay. So, Bally, if we go back to Bruce Wayne, um, when he was saying earlier, he straight up feels like he's paper trading for so long still. So he wrote it out last year. I was learning to take a big loss relative to my account. Then I started to paper trade. And I feel like I stayed there for too long because I started coming up with a process. And then I switched back to real trading with real money. It was different. And I had to relearn a lot of things mentally. So All learning right, so, to, yep, yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I mean, let me comment on that. So basically the thing is this, guys, once you make it, once you take a big loss, you're scared. I'm scared. I mean, I make, I make money like five days in a row, then boom, fourth day, I take a loss, right? So for example, and then every time I take a loss, I start to doubt myself. Seriously, guys, after all these decades, whenever you lose anything in life, you start to doubt yourself. Okay. Um, one thing you have to remember though. Okay. Why are you afraid? You're afraid that, oh shit, a couple of reasons. There are many reasons I hear that trade that even good traders are afraid of. They, they start to doubt themselves thinking, was it all luck all this time? Yeah, seriously. Number two is, holy shit. What if I make a mistake and I lose my entire account? So what you need to do is this, guys. Once again, this is why I talked about the max daily loss at the broker level. That big loss relative to your account will not happen, guys, if you set up that risk parameter. <clears throat> because of the fact that you set up that risk parameter, if you're still afraid, lower the max loss. Lower that max loss. Because now <laughs> what happens is I don't, I don't trade trade anymore. Because I know that even if I fuck up, that the system will take me out. 
That risk parameter is your risk compliance officer. Well, that, is I, your, that is your parole officer that's fucking telling you, you, you would not go back to the fucking penalty box. You would not go back to jail losing all your money. You know, so set that number to whatever small number you like until you get ready to move back up to a bigger size. Well, and I think, and I think guys, it's very important for your mindset and your mental clarity that you don't look at people like Bao or Alex, myself, or any of the moderators as people who don't experience these emotions still. We still get scared. We still get stressed. We still deal with FOMO. It's not like, it's not like Bao's not human, dude. We deal with this even after we've been trading for a decade or two decades, like, dude, we still have to battle these every day. That's why you never just make it and then get complacent. You have to learn and grow and adapt and grow and learn and adapt. And, and, and we're still dealing with FOMO every day. Like this is why having a process and a plan is paramount. And nobody talks about this enough outside of us. Every time I think I overthink, I get paranoid. I psych myself out. So right. do not overthink. This is why fantasy orders are important. I make my, my fantasy orders. I put in my little orders. And then that's when I know that though those, those lines are the lines that I want it to hit. And so I shouldn't be scared. <clears throat> Could you imagine trading two decades and still get scared in FOMO? Yup, that was an example of that. That's Dude, what I, it's I, like, I, guys. Seriously. It's, it's human emotions, guys. Exactly. Uh, and I, I <laughs> um, and that's why I, I always, always think about ways to how to help alleviate these issues for traders, new or old. I never knew the existence of these max daily loss auto liquidation until recently. Yeah. And so when we found out like a year ago, whatever the hell it is, I'm like, what the fuck? I, I known this when I started trading, I would not blow accounts. How can you blow up account? You can never, ever blow up account again if you set up the right risk parameter, right guys? Definitely. This is why. I, this is why I said we, you guys figure out the fucking secret now that I, that I could not crack until all this time. Max daily loss set at the broker level, but you have to do it in auto liquidation. Now, now that we now that we know this stuff, like truly know this stuff, and like <clears throat> legitimately teach it, it's so funny when I hear like people talk on Twitter. Like maybe they're a competing service, maybe they're just a random trader, maybe they're just some random dipshit. But they're always like, "I'm so scared of like blowing my account, and I'll never be a trader again." It's like, dude, I don't like. We don't even have those type of conversations anymore. Like, what? It doesn't even make sense, dude. When you protect your account, it's like having a ticket to the stock market for the rest of your life because you're not an so, idiot. So help your friends out. <clears throat> maybe um or are, are you here broker liaison i think he's a dentist yep, yep, yep. um right here. If, if he's here guys tell everybody be, put on this max that you lost guys if uh buy buy the ticker or buy the entire account it's up to you but make sure that you know you have that on because you know you will fuck up guys i guarantee you everybody everybody will fuck up from time to time now, someone someone asked on um, someone asked on YouTube, "Do you guys teach OTCs?" I, I figured you'd be the best to answer that. Uh, yeah, OTC is just the same as any other stock that is small cap, except I don't. Uh, except the problem with OTC is the routing and stuff. Uh, so Success Trader actually is one of the rare uh, brokers that that's the broker I used you know, to trade OTCs back in the day. So, <clears throat> so OTCs uh, you need a, a special broker. For that, and Success Trader is a good broker for that because it has a night route. Nice. David just said, emailed them today, had it implemented in minutes. What did I say, guys? Customer leading, um, well, industry leading customer service. Boom. So, yep. Uh, the, I'm telling you guys, everybody watching this webinar right now, I don't care what broker you use, go try to set up this match that you lost us. Definitely. Definitely. Guys, any questions while you have me and Bao for a little bit longer? Any questions about trading? Maybe things that ran today? Um, oh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, Sai, how flexible do, uh, to the lines should fantasy orders be? Well, I have, well, I, I scale. So I set half of it before and after just to, hit, just to make sure that I average up. Yep. So again, Sai, it's like when you have a strategy that's technically line to line, you have to figure out what you're willing and comfortable to scale. Sometimes the lines are a little bit further than trader A wants to scale, but trader B is like, oh, dude, are you kidding me? I'll scale three lines. So again, this it goes where, back to process. This is where paper trading, simulation trading helps. Every time I look at a stock, I am always paper trading in my head. And I'm guessing, is it going to go to the line? How far the slippage is of the line? So there's slippage. So sometimes I do half before the line. Sometimes I do half after. 
you know, just one bullet. It depends on what it is, right, guys? Yeah. It's not an exact science, man. I'm telling you right now, it's not an ex exact science. But it's, a, it's an area. It's an area of interest. A line is an area of interest. Definitely. Does your approach change at all when you see a daily theme? Like when we see all China names gapping this pre-market, Val? No? It depends on the theme. I've never been good at the Chinese crap. Chinese crap is just fucking, this is crazy, man. Chinese shit, like it runs. Chinese shit, in my opinion, is good for longs. Look at some of the plays today that killed a lot of the people. ZH, KC. Look at that stock, KC. Yeah, like I, I think that you shouldn't expect, I, but so, there, so when I see identifiers, thing, right? I, I avoid it for me. There are certain themes I like because what I do is this. Okay, you have to identify yourself. Are you long buys or short buys? Straight, right? If you're both, then good. So if if you spot an early theme, you go long in the beginning of the early theme place. It's, it's early theme means sector place. Go back and review the sector play videos that we made. The last sector play video was what? Uh, shit, what was that? Um, the oil. So oil was a big one that we did it well on, right guys? Uh, that was just last week. So now it's Chinese names. So Chinese names still early. So what's gonna happen is if I wanted to, and I'm gonna wait for the head of the snake, but I don't know enough about the Chinese names to know what the hell the head of the snake of the Chinese names are, right? Because <laughs> uh, the theme is too big. It's just like the whole fucking Chinese. Because you know, what happens is uh, the, the Hong Kong index or some shit went up like 9% today. So all these stocks started going crazy. So I don't know enough about China to even touch it. So if I don't know, I don't want to really touch it. Because right. oil, US oil, we understand. I understand oil well. Shippers, I understand shippers well. So those themes, you know, they pop up again. I, I can understand. But uh, sometimes the themes are just too weird for me. And I just don't know enough of it to trade it. Exactly. Look at this. Dude, we are almost back to highs on spot. Are you kidding me with this? So built in, man. Wow. Um, oh, uh, nice. Thank you, Stock Slayer. Uh, in TZ Trade Zero, max max uh, daily loss can be set once signed into the home webpage. Cool. The yeah. dentist is working on me and they all hear cursing. <laughs> Tell them to buy Alibaba. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, man. See now that's that's dedication, guys. That is commitment right there, man. He's getting in, he's getting his uh, he's getting his uh, teeth filled, and Brooklyn Liaison's probably got a root canal pole today. <laughs> uh, guys, any questions? Any questions specifically? Hit us with any type of psychological questions, price action questions. This is your chance to finally get out of your comfort zone, not be shy, and get help that you need. Um, bottom hit, the bottom hit market yet, bro. First of all, no one knows that the bottom of the market's coming. Uh, if you think a barely dip one day dips the bottom, you got in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> I think, I think in the micro, like, like today, yes, but in the macro, dude, not even close. <laughs> but pull up a 10 year chart. <laughs> this is just like a blip. This is like a little blip. So like well, a here's a five. Here's a five. <laughs> so this is like a little pothole, but the pothole is like, a little scratch <laughs> <laughs> seriously so the, the thing is guys no one knows what the hell it is with 100 certainty make a plan whatever you do i keep saying this guys make a plan whatever you do um you know and have a risk parameter predetermine your risk yep i use rsi guys if i'm using the daily chart on like big caps and stuff and like honestly we're a little it was a little oversold right here as you guys can see but still it doesn't mean it can't go lower so who knows if it doesn't go to 340 dude you never know when like a massive market crash or like a depression is coming we're technically in kind of a recession right now almost so well, yeah the thing is that they knew that the fed's gonna raise rates and stuff so that it was kind of baked in yeah uh, so i mean but the problem is that it's easy to say in hindsight it was baked in it kept on going down to oh it surprised us you know no, you so, know what's crazy? Bro, here's the power of lines, right? In areas of interest. Dude, listen to this. Before this did this major crack, like it was literally just tanking right here. Bro, we said that this was this was a serious line that you need to pay attention to. Wow, wow. <laughs> you guys see that? Draw the lines. Look, look how the lines line up. Go to the left. Go to the bro, left. Bro, we yeah, literally, literally. Top, to the left, like, go to the left. The top of the dude, dude, the lines, dude. The horizontal line. Look, right, look, there. right here, right here, right here. Oh my god, right there, guys. So that's the thing. If it cracks through there, then it's gonna start going to the next line. Line. No, we line. called it, bro. We called it when it was literally here, like even before that. Uh, it was like right here before you came uh, on. 
Wow. Like that, that's crazy, right? Wow. This shit works, huh? Dude, the <laughs> go, lines, go, baby. The lines. Hey, I'm here, telling you. How did you know it was going to work, Josh? <laughs> well, I, you don't, man. But I just said, when it was tanking fast, I was like, I bet, I wonder if it'll break this line. That's your Very key Play, line. Place your fantasy orders right there. You would have filled. Dude, and, and then and then bro you can take it one step further and go pivot points and it's like bro you if you scale into the pivot point like this is your starters making money like yeah. this is it. so you add all the indicators that we told you about the, the the support line right there and the pivot lines for large cap works really well and so worst case you're gonna do is okay if it cracks go through there you sell you sell seriously yeah good Oops. job guys the lines work man look at that look at that big one line he drew crazy shit man Wow, look, 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 look. So what happens in the lines? Once again, guys, a line is an area of interest. Depending on the direction you come from, it could be a support or resistance. So notice on the way up, it was a major resistance and finally cracked it. It took one, two, three, four times, five times to crack it, right? Yep. We actually said exactly because I was giving myself a little too perfect advantage. We said, I bet you 425 is a really, really key level of support. Boom. Look at it. Yep. It's crazy, man. Take a look at Go to the left and you see how many one, two, three, four, five times. And then what happens once it breaks, guys? Oh, shit, even more, right? So once it breaks, uh, the resistance, the, the old resistance becomes the support. Guys, I'll, like, try to make this as easy for you as possible, literally. Like, and, you know, and it doesn't have to be exactly a T. You can just kind of see where these tops were. Like, dude, look at this. Like, like, are you kidding me? You see what I'm saying? So educate, like, uh, and Tosh, educate them real quickly on this concept of uh, resistance and support and how the resistance now it turns into a support. Well, it's just... We I mean, you say this way better than I do, but it's just because it's it's such a psychological level of in, of interest, so to speak, that on the way up, guys, it's it's kind of like the first it's not resistance. Even psycholo- it's not even psychological. It's technical. It's a technical. Um, so think about these lines as elevators on on an apartment high rise. Yep. So you're going from one apartment up up to the next, right? Then one level, one floor up to the next. So. Uh, these are all this is what we call technical analysis guys so, be, so technical analysis is like basically it's it's probability based upon statistical analysis from the previous thing so the only thing the only thing that you can do to guess what's the future is based upon the past right guys and so that's all we this is all is doing it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because what happens is um a lot of the programs are based upon this so so that's why the pivot lines are so strong because all the algos are programmed around the pivot lines, right? Exactly. Well, and, and, and what I said, psychological, like, Val, don't you think a lot of people are, like, waiting for those lines, like traders and stuff? Like, it, the psychological still works, though. So what happens is, um, so it's actually more technical. Well, sure, it's technical, in, but in there's some case, psychological baked in there, right? Like, hold well, well, the is, numbers. This is the reason and, why, because uh, what happens is each one, each time it gets to that point, there are a bunch of bag holders yep. or a bunch of uh, supply at that area. And that's why it works. So it's a supply from the previous guy that's fucking back holding there. So, so well, it's psychological in the sense of, yeah, but, but when you look down at it's technical, the psychological ones are the whole and half numbers. So every, so what, what, what that's why we do 425. Yep. 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 And, and so those are the things guys. So for those like a 400, even though it's not a technical, it's still a, and a line of interest for us because it's psychological. Because people yeah, like I think sell, I think people like to sell and buy at whole numbers. Who's buying four four thirteen? Right? They're like four ten. You know things like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's psychological in the sense that the technical works, guys, because like <laughs> this is here for a reason. Like when you identify it, you see what I'm saying? You can break down the psychology of price action. Yeah. Can you so, guys talk about mixing? That's got a good oh. question. So, so, so what happens is when the lines up, up there's it, so the more indicators line up, guys, the more confidence I get to make that trade. So, the, if the lines are closed like that, the pivot line, I I save some for both lines. Well, well, Bell, that was the example that we just used, right? So, Nicholas, so remember, you can scale into a pivot. You don't have to just literally wait for the pivot line if you don't want. So, if this is a huge tank and it's accelerating, it's a long journey and this has to bounce at some point, and we use the 425, look, you're not hitting the exact pivot line, but what if it doesn't make it? Hence, exactly what you saw. So, that's exactly what you're what you're saying right here. When you mix lines, brother, this is a very, very key line to put for support. And then if you mix it with scaling in up to the pivot point, now you win. That's the point of like mixing line, line to line, right? Um, when is it beneficial to scale in both versus cut at the first and reattack when they're very far away from each other? 
when they're very far away. Val, would you agree on that? Uh, like, like, like when is it beneficial to scale into both versus cut at the first and re-attack to the well, next? Well, is this on YouTube? Uh, yeah, this is on YouTube. So copy and paste that so that everybody can see that as well. So. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The question is, I thought you were asking if we were doing a YouTube live. No, no, it's right here. Uh, uh, both. Oh. Yeah, N Nicholas uh, Morizel. Well, yeah. I, from everyone, remember these, when you cut it for a loss, is when you exit those, those are the things that you predetermine. Everyone's going to be different based upon your time frames and your, in your strategy. My stra if your strategy is really short term, then you can just cut it once that line is not being supported anymore, right? Um, I I save bullets. I'm not all in on one line, so I use I can use two lines. So you determine which one is best for your trading. Uh, it all it all revolves around your risk management. How do you want to do your risk? Do you want to uh, be more conservative and where each entry now is smaller? So that you can have wider stops. Remember, smaller size, wider stops, in my opinion, solves most of your trading issues. Smaller That's size, cool. wider stops. Smaller I love that, man. God, that that like changed my trading career years ago when I heard you. You're Val, you're the only person preaching that back in the day, dude. Dude, I'm still preaching a lot of these <laughs> guys are showing giant P and L's. And so people think they need to size up. What happens is when you size up, there's no room for error. Very small room for error once you size up. You see my chart, it looks ugly as hell, but, but you know what, man? I have a lot of room for error. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody on Twitter is just a dick swinger that just wants to make it seem like the bigger the number, the better you are. It's like, dude, even veterans have to size down when they're not on a winning streak. Like, are you kidding me? I I, I, I aim for consistency, you know, uh, when when the say A++++ plus 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 set up like first red day, then you can size up. You know, you save the sizing up, but but when you're mess when but normally I, I like to size down and have wider stops. Uh, you can determine that by looking at the stock. See the that's what we call range of the stock. Take a look at the high and the low. See how far the stock moves. Some stocks range very small. Yeah. Because yeah. of because it's too big volume. So the bigger the volume, the the bigger the float, the smaller the range. Hell yeah. It, it takes more volume, more shares to move a stock. That's why it's very dangerous to, sh to short front size low flow because there's not many shares and the range is so huge. Range could be 300%. <laughs> Lucid sounds ass on YouTube. Oh, I have a good way of saying this. How much space would you give it if it broke under the pivot line before cutting? So I'll just give you like the reverse example, Lucid, of what we did here. Say you're actually waiting for the pivot point. Like some people make that their starting point. So the stock is going up. Maybe you start shorting right here, but it goes to the next line and the next line is close before coming back down. You have to understand that you might want to scale here to that. So it's up to you, brother. It's like, it's like, how long did it make the journey to the pivot point? Did you start at the pivot point or like on this long, when you start at 425, maybe you cut if it breaks the pivot point because you've already scaled earlier on the buy versus it, the short. It also, you know, it also depends on your size. Yep, Remember, exactly. once, again, goes, once again, it goes to your risk parameter rules. Are you playing risk? Uh, oh, take a look. Uh, someone post a video. There's a video on how to properly take a stop loss, guys. How to properly take a loss. I don't want to repeat all the reasons why you will stop. People can stop out on a technical line price. That they can step, uh, stop out because of a, they they hit the max loss for that trade uh, or time based factor like zombie hour when cut that shit off. There's many ways. So go into the video library, guys. How to take a loss. How to properly take a loss. There's a bunch of videos on that. Guys, like I'm, I'm telling you, man, like we have search feature. We have the here. You, you'll find it all here, guys. You'll find it all. Everything you're looking for. Um, example, is it is it similar to how price tags tend to be $4.99 instead of 5 in the store? You will feel it is cheaper when it's only 0.01 away. Well, he's, he's talking about price targets and like the psychological levels, I guess. Um, yes and no, that's not extremely correlated but remember just how does the how does the human mind think right Sai? so like how does the human mind think Val just said it perfectly if if someone's buying on the dip they don't want 413 they're going to wait to 410 you know what i mean like, most people it's not going to do 499 simple. i do 499 to undercut them but most people want to sell at five bucks yeah most people do five 
or 50 like, cents. Because like your mom, your mom is going to sit there and put a long term sellout at five or buy five bucks. Uh, I do 501, 499, you know. Yeah. You know, you know but, but to be honest, guys, I, it's up to the, up to the market and what what it is because there's always slippage guys there's always going to be slippage the algo is trying to hunt the best prices for the, the algo so sometimes it will trigger just a small handful of shares so 4.99 and five bucks it, it may seem like oh it's a penny but there's a big difference between let's say only 500 shares fill at 4.99 but a million shares fill at five bucks so sometimes i only get a partial fill because I'm trying to be tricky, you know? So it's up to you. It's, a lot of times it's fucking random, guys. That's why I spray around a certain area. Instead of doing one bullet, I do I break that bullet into two. Or just, you know, I mean, you you figure it out. Um, you want to be too early? I mean, you want to be a little early or a little late? <laughs> Definitely. Very well said. <laughs> LB asked, Bal, can you give a small account update? Where are you on that thing? I don't even remember. Transitioning to, I'm transitioning to success trader. Alex is starting to do that too. So so, um, so I, I don't have those updates. I'm pretty much kind of like in limbo right now with that same account. Uh, the market's been pretty, I've been kind of just, just flatlining, but not, not losing. So it's good. Yep, definitely. I took a chunk out of the, uh, the, the account already, so. I'm just kind of sitting around on that. Hell yeah. Wire out, man. 35, once you get to 50, wire out. Once you get to 50, wire out. Once you get to 50, wire out. Process. Nicholas, got a question. Um, I think we got everybody on YouTube. Thank you guys for asking questions. Awesome. And also, guys, once this webinar ends, if you have any questions during the week or you're like, Tosh, I still need a little bit. I, I just still need to get my questions answered before I join. Just text me, 213-458-5997. I swear to God, it's me. I'm not a bot, not an algorithm. Uh, as long as the text comes through, I'm here to answer it, guys. I promise you. Thank you for posting those, David. Those are great videos. I missed the Driving with Bal series. Bal, we got to get you driving again. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get you behind a wheel, bro. Guys, guys uh, gas is too expensive. To <laughs> <laughs> you might do, hey, I might do walking with Bal. <laughs> Piggy, piggyback riding with Val. <laughs> Hitchhiking. Hitchhiking with Val. Dude, you are straight up the funniest guy I know. I swear to God. <laughs> Gas those, is too expensive. Those driving series may not happen for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're ridiculous, bro. Oh, my God. Back when you were in San Jose, bro, the granny in the hill. <laughs> oh, man. We missed Val huffing and puffing up that hill. I don't think I can do that again. <laughs> Troll, trolls were like, he's dying. He's going to have a heart attack. We're like, no, dude, he's talking and teaching and freaking up a <laughs> vertical hill. That's pretty hard, man, to be able to walk and talk. I know, dude. And trolls are like, he's going to have a heart attack. It's like, no, dude, you idiots. <laughs> he must be on drugs. <laughs> he must be on coke and drugs and all this stuff. It's like, what the hell, dude? He's just hiking and teaching. <laughs> Getting beaten by a grandma. I have a question about the frequency of trading. I am having a hard time finding the consistency every day. Technically, if you want to end the day green every day, wouldn't you have to trade at least a couple times a day like you, Val? I trade when the opportunity is there, guys. Uh, a lot of people are too focused on just ending the day green. And so they force a trade to be green. Don't do that. When the opportunity is there, I trade. Yeah, everything about that question, Nicholas, was about a little bit about, hey, I can feel myself forcing, I'm forcing, how do you do it? Do you force to result? No, no, no. Anytime that you're forcing, bro, is when you need to pump the brakes and wait for your lines, your setup, your trend, your dip, whatever it is. Um, if you feel like you're kind of chaotic and winging it and, and, and forcing anything, revenge trading, that's when you're in trouble. Even the whole question is like the energy of forcing. You know what I mean? I, I can see you're really overcomplicating it, buddy. Wait for your lines, man. Wait for your lines. Yeah, so um, exactly, man. Just, just trade with the opportunities there, guys. Yep. Fantasy orders. Nicholas, fantasy orders is going to change your life. Whether you trade once a day or two times a week, but they're really good trades. And then you're most of the time, if not all the time, green. Uh, Bow sets limit orders if they hit, they hit. Exactly, Maui Guy. That's exactly right. Fantasy orders, buddy. I had the same issue, but fantasy orders and lines really help. Exactly. So I just confirmed. 
Um, David, I missed three or more entries today and didn't chase. I am red on locates, but that is just the cost of doing business. Yes, exactly right. And if we're just talking about trading and not broker fees, um, dude, right? If you if they don't hit your lines, you don't force. Alex, dude, I don't even think Alex traded today, right? Alex said he didn't trade today. And here's the thing. He didn't lose. The things did not hit his lines. And that happens every now and then. That's okay. That's okay. Getting drunk with Val. We need a series. Get, <laughs> ever seen like drunk history? <laughs> like we need to trade drunk with Val. Hey, alcohol is cheaper than um, gasoline right now. So. <laughs> Val's putting Ciroc in his freaking Ferrari. <laughs> He's putting the Henny in. Dude, man, I, a DoorDash just announced they're putting a, a, a temporary uh, additional fee for, to, to, to compensate for gas. I'm like, what? No way. That's like when COVID first struck, man, and restaurants were like COVID charge. And it's like, what the hell? Yeah, man. Once they stop putting that surcharge on, they never take it off. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's still COVID. Dude, they're still doing a, a, a fucking a, a black plague surcharge from back in the day. <laughs> the Spanish flow charge. Bell, <laughs> I, Bell, I couldn't believe it, but um, in Miami over the weekend, bro, all the restaurants I went to, all the gratuity, I've never seen this before. Uh, maybe it's not a West Coast thing. I have no idea, but all the gratuity is in, like automatically charged your receipt. And then they ask you if you want to do additional gratuity. <laughs> I was like, wait, what the fuck? What is this? Yeah, they do that to uh, for you when you're drunk. You don't know that they already put a freaking 18% gratuity. I was, gonna, dude, I was going to say, like, I felt like I was about to double tip. I didn't even know. I was like, how the hell is the chicken sandwich $70? On? What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, man, you got to be careful on that. Uh, a lot of uh, the good, the honest ones will tell you uh, tips included. Yeah, they didn't tell me, bro. They dropped that shit off, but I'm like an accountant. I'm like, Dude, it's worse. On me. It's worse if you're drunk at a club and they already put 20% tax. The Dude, they, they have a couple items at a club. 20% gratuity. They have a club fee. I don't know what the fuck's a club fee. And then they have an club additional fee. line. And so when they give you the bill, they don't, they don't give you, they don't fail you. And you're like, fuck it, end up tipping like 50%. <laughs> Bro, I've seen it in clubs though. I've never seen it in like a restaurant before. I was like, what do you mean this shit's included already? Oh, hey, hey, uh, you, you left your little cult compound wherever you are now you enter the big boy club the, the, the regular world bro so like so congratulations tosh everyone should thank Th tosh i know man i never i never traveled i was always like our little tosh is growing up i never travel bro i never travel do you tip your order for pickup uh dude i i that's a good question i i do you tip for pickup i, I mean what Dude, nowadays I go to fucking Whole Foods and they have a tip jar out. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, tips are getting honestly out of control. Like sometimes I'll tip on, on like a pickup, but dude, I got to really be feeling it, man. Because sometimes I don't, bro. Hey guys, uh, I want to put out a tip jar too, so. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put it. We're, we have a new cash, thing. Cash app me. Tip. You cash, can tip. cash app me. Cash app you, me. You can tip in Dogecoin. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's just ridiculous, man. I, I went to check out groceries. And I saw a tip jar. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I? I mean, the price is already ridiculous. What the fuck, man? I already poor. <laughs> that was like, that was like, I walked out of Whole Foods, got a sandwich for fifty dollars. What well, fuck you with? Hey, hey, here, here's a tip for you. Uh, fancy orders. <laughs> <laughs> Join our MIC. Top, there's your our tip. Top. Here's a tip. If someone has your tip right now. That that tip line, Tosh, the digital tip. <laughs> Join MIC. <laughs> oh, I'll give you the tip. Oh, you want a tip? Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see. Got smoked with that sneaky auto gratuity in West Hollywood. <laughs> Gabwam, you gotta be careful, bro. The tip in it. <laughs> Funny, had my wife look at a receipt at a steakhouse because I didn't have my glasses. Said it looked good and didn't say anything about gratuity. Already added, and I ended up. Double you know what, man? I never look at receipts, Alvi, and now I'm gonna look at all of them. Check this out, guys. I even heard a bit. I, I found out a bigger scam. So what happens is, um. You know, when you get drunk, they always say double the tax as a quick 18, 15%, right? Yep. The tax is like usually 8%, 7%, whatever, right? And so, so what did they do is, dude, well, I went to a fucking place in California where they, they manipulated the, the receipt and showed a huge ass tax and a smaller subtotal. What the hell? So that the drunk guys would fucking double the tax and then now they're paying like 40%. Oh my God! Because because they everyone's been told to double the, t the tax, right? 
as a quick way to do it, right? And so I caught them, dude, because you know I'm a math geek and shit, right? And so <laughs> I went up, I, I, conf I confronted them, and then they're like, "Oh, oh, the the register must be broken. This is, I'll fix it." Then I turn off. Then that, you know, I'm an asshole too. <laughs> I turned to my neighbor. Like, can I see your receipt? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So I was just telling everybody in this tour. It's fucking crazy, dude. Dude, the Mastro's register, register algo is broke. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Dude, what a scam, right? Unbelievable. So you gotta be careful nowadays, guys, of all these crazy ass scams. <laughs> Inflation is so bad in LA that they're just, they have to eye gouge everybody. <laughs> dude, they, they, I, I hate it when they, they, they you know, they use the uh, iPad and then you sign your name, and then the, 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 the tip is there, and they're looking at you, dude. <laughs> dude, <laughs> they're looking, my, they're dude, looking at you like, like, fuck. And you know what? And then, you know, like, they, they have a choices, the quick choices. But I was like, how do I get out of this tip? <laughs> so some of the choices, I mean, you know, put in some real, realistic shit, right? Start with 10% and move up to 20. Some of these places start from 20%. No, oh, dude. No, 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 Bell. Bell, the Starbucks in Miami I went to every single morning for three days, bro, had as soon as I was done putting in $7 for a goddamn latte, they're like, your minimum tip is 15%, 20%, 20%. I'm like, I'm like scrolling down all the way to zero. Like, fuck you, dude. What do you mean a tip on my Starbucks? It's already an eye gouge. And I'm like, great. This guy's going to spit my fucking drink, dude. Yep, yep. And they're looking at you, bro. Dude, I know, like, dude. He was looking at me like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like, I know you'll be here tomorrow, motherfucker. <laughs> like, and now they're, now they're, now they're, I don't want to, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sound cheap and shit, but it's like, this is the point where it's ridiculous. Now I got like, you know, you want to, they, they have all these charities on there too. Do you want to add an extra five, like five bucks for whatever dollar for it? <laughs> I'm like, at the end of the day, you, you check out, it's like 100% surcharge. Anyway, <laughs> dude, anyways, guys, so, we sound like assholes. We're not, dude. It's just, Again, a tip is meant to be tipped for your wonderful service. If you're not providing a service other than your normal job, there's no reason for a tip unless you actually want to throw some cash I, I, at them. I, I, Didn't you give a big tip to some girl over the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely did that, but we'll save that for uh, next week. But, uh, yeah, guys, so any other questions? I want to get away from this. I want, But uh, tip, hey, guys, you know, if you're nice to the junior mods, the mods, send them a nice fucking Subway sandwich for lunch. That's, that's a good tip, so... <laughs> You know, they help you guys out a lot, guys. So have them post their Dogecoin wallet. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> guys, this was an awesome webinar. I think we should probably wrap up. Unless so, has... oh yeah. So a couple of things, guys. So any awesome. questions on um uh, on the new broker? Because you know a lot of people are still waiting um for replies. If you have any issues, uh broker liaison. Um, there might be some applications that they they may have actually overlooked to process. So just kind of like keep that in mind, like you know, that we're getting swamped over there, but uh, everything's good. Um, any issues, hit us up, let us know. We are here to help facilitate the process for you guys to migrate over to success trader as smoothly as possible. Definitely, definitely. It's the coolest. I tipped the, I tip the hairdresser. You did the hairdresser. What the fuck do that? So the thing is, like, this is for my, my rule of thumb on tipping is very simple. It depends on the person, not the establishment. I hate being forced to do something automatically because Anything, of convention. Yeah. Um, it depends on the person. If the person's nice, I, I over tip. If not, like, dude, I've tipped Uber drivers a hundred bucks in cash before. Many times when I'm drunk on my fucking ass and they don't, they don't tell me to put on my COVID mask. I fucking tip a hundred bucks. Straight yeah, up seriously, cash. man. Seriously. It depends on the situation and the person. Yep. The bathroom attendants. I always tip nice. Cause fuck man. I, they are there spilling my shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you brother for being here to serve me instead of fucking robbing me outside. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, that was like, I get to leave with my Rolex still on my wrist. I'm going to tip you just Seriously, bro. So I, I, I made a quick story before we get off. Uh, so I went to this bar for like years and I seen this guy as a bathroom attendant. This was a small bathroom too. Not like one of those big posh ones, right? A tiny one right next to the fucking toilet. And he's been there for a long time. So every time I see him drunk, I'm giving him advice on, you know, life and shit. And so after eight months of this, eight months of me helping him, he goes, Bow, I fucking finally did it, man. I find that um, I quit my, I quit this job and I'm going back. I got a new job or going to school or something like that. And he goes, I, I have you to thank for it. And it was a fucking like the best feeling in the world, man. And so the best tip sometimes is not monetary is your time and your experience to help others. And you, if you don't think that your experience just being here is good enough, you, you, there are millions of people out there that wish that they were in your shoes, guys. So don't ever think that you are not worthy of anything. 
just because you cannot trade well, just because you don't make a million dollars. There are people in out there in the world that wish they were you. So uh, the best I tip that, sometimes man. is not monetary. Sometimes the best tip is just your time, your kindness to them and your humbleness to them and give them hope, that. give them hope. So that's so sick, man. Let's end on that. Guys, if you have any last minute questions, save them for next week. We'll absolutely get to them. But that was awesome, Val. All right, guys. We'll see you back in after ours. All right, guys. I'm going to go get some food and not tip. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to go get some food, though. We'll see you guys. All right, see bro. you, Val. All right, bye. <laughs>